Welcome to After Effects and Flash Part 1. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily create some complex text animations inside of After Effects and then easily import them to Flash to use in your Flash movies. So I'm going to be using After Effects 6.5 Professional. And if you don't have that, uh, Adobe has a full featured trial version that you can download from their website. So the first thing you want to do anytime you're in After Effects is to create a composition. And you can think of that as kind of like the stage inside of Flash. This is your work area. So I'm going to click on the composition menu, click new composition, and then this composition settings dialog box comes up. This is where you set up all your parameters for your composition. So I'm just going to choose uh, one of these presets. It's just a medium 320 by 240 and you want to make sure you have square pixels selected here because we're not doing this uh, you know when it, this is not destined for video or for TV and then the frame rate you want this to be the frame rate of the flash movie that you're going to be bringing this into so I'm going to make mine at 30 frames a second okay and then down in the duration this is where you set how long do you want your composition to be so I'm just going to set a large number just for now because we're going to trim it up once we're finished so I'm going to click OK. OK, so now you can see it's created my composition. And it's also brought me the timeline down here, which we're going to be using. OK, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create some text here, create a text layer. So I'm going to come up to the Tools palette, click the Text tool. And I'm just going to click in here. And I'm just going to type Flash. And let me bring this down to 100%. OK. So let me just center that up like that. Okay, now we want to apply some of the built-in text animations to this text. So the place to find all of those animations is go to the Window menu and then choose Effects and Presets. That will then pop up this palette here, which has all of your uh, presets, not just for text animations, but for everything inside of After Effects. But for text, you want to choose this Animations Preset and you're going to twirl that down and then get to this twirl down text and then all of these folders are all the different categories different types of text animations available to you inside After Effects and if I open one of these you can see there's tons and tons of different effects um, there's hundreds of effects that ship with After Effects 6.5 Professional so the question is then which do you choose? I mean, it'd be nice if you could see some of these. Well, luckily, Adobe has included a preset gallery. So if you go to the Help menu and then click on Text Preset Gallery, it will then open a browser window. Then from here, you can click on any one of those different categories. So I'm going to click on Organic Text Animation. And you can see it has a little flash preview of what that text animation does. So the one I'm going to be using right now for this example is Wobble. You can kind of see what it does there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to After Effects. And I have my text here. And now I'm just going to go down to that organic uh, folder, twirl it down, and then just scroll down to where it says Wobble. Now I want to apply this text animation to my text layer. To do that, you just click and drag it onto the text. And you can see what happens when I'm dragging over the text. It puts a little gray border around the text just to kind of indicate to you that you're about to apply a text animation to this. Okay, so when I let it go, you can see the text goes away because it's going to be animating in and kind of fading in. So let me go and kind of scrub on the timeline. You can kind of see what's happening there. And let me get rid of this now. Okay, so if you want to see what this... Uh, will look like in real time, you want to come down to the RAM preview in your time controls palette. And when you click on that, the first time it goes through, it's going to be loading it into RAM, so it may play it faster than normal. But then it will play it again at normal speed. So when I click on that, you can see it's faster. And now here is how it will play in actual time. Okay, so this is good. But I have this long 30 second composition here but I'm only using a tiny bit of it. So I want to trim this composition just to the time that I want. So I'm going to use the scrubber and just find out exactly where the end of the animation is. About right there. Okay, so now in order to, to trim this up, this little gray bar here, I'm going to come over and grab this 
and I'm going to drag it to where the playhead is. And this is called the work area. So now I want to crop this timeline just to this area. To do that, I'm going to go to the composition menu and then click trim comp to work area. Okay, so now my composition is only as long as that animation is happening. But up here, you can see I have all this extra space here that I'm not using. So I want to actually crop this. So to do that, I'm going to come down to the composition window and this button right here is called the region of interest. So when you click on it, you can then drag a box which is the region of interest in this composition. Then to crop that, just go back to the composition menu and you're going to select crop comp to region of interest. Okay, so you can see now it's cropped just to where I'm going to need it, just where the animation is happening. Okay, so now we're ready to export this into a Swift format so that we can use it inside of Flash. And the great thing about this is it's going to be all vectors. It's going to be exporting this as all vectors. So once we get this inside of Flash, we can then animate this thing as a whole to even make the animations more complicated. So let's export this. You're going to go to the File menu and go under Export and choose Macromedia Flash. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to call this Flash Text and click Save. Okay, now the Swift Settings dialog box comes up. So this first section, the JPEG quality, determines if there are things in this animation that After Effects cannot turn into vectors, this is where you're going to set what quality you want it exported as. But we want, but we want to make sure that only vectors are exported with this, because we want it to be lightweight and we want it to be scalable. So the way to do that is you tell it to ign ignore unsupported features. The other thing you could possibly do is click rasterize. So it would export everything as vectors uh, as much as it could, then anything else after that it would rasterize those. But for this example we want it to ignore unsupported features. And these selections down here, um, I'm just going to leave those as the default, just unchecked. Okay, so now when I click OK, you can see it's exporting. And now we have a Swift file with this text animation. Now we're going to go into Flash. I'll show you how to import it and then animate this thing as a whole to increase the complexity of it. Okay, so here we are inside of Flash and I've just created a new Flash document and I've set the background color to black to match what we had in After Effects and set the frame rate to match our animation which was at 30 frames per second. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a movie clip which we're going to import this text animation into. So I'm going to go to Insert, New Symbol, and select Movie Clip. And I'm just going to call this Flash Text and click OK. Okay, so here we are in edit mode. So I'm going to rename this layer. I'm just going to call it Text. I like the first keyframe. Now I'm just going to hit Control R because we want to import that animation. Okay, so from here, I'm going to select that Flash Text Swift file that we made click open. And you can see what it's done, it's just imported this as a sequence of keyframes but it's all in vectors. So if I come down and test this, if I hit enter you can see there's our animation now. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to come up to the timeline and I want this to stop at the end. I want it to come through once and stop. So I'm going to highlight that last keyframe and in the actions panel, I'm just going to type stop. And for something this small, just a one stop command, I wouldn't make an actions layer for something like this, but you could. Okay, so now I have this movie clip with this text animation as a sequence of keyframes. So let's go back to the root timeline. Okay, so I want to drag a copy of that movie clip out to the stage. Okay, I'm just going to put it in the center. So I want this, I want to actually animate this thing as a whole so that I increase the complexity of the animation. So what I want to do is I want to come back in here, go back to edit mode, and I want to find out how long the animation is. So if I click on that last keyframe, you can see down here it tells me it's 90 frames long. So now I'm going to come back to the root timeline, and I'm going to come down to where 90 frames is, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. 
Okay, so now I want to scale this up a bit. So I'm going to right click on it, go to free transform, hold down the shift key to constrain the proportions. I'm just going to bring it up about like that. Okay, so now I'll come up, and I'm going to go back to the first keyframe, and I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit like that. Okay, so now I want to create a motion tween on this, so I can right click anywhere in there, click create motion tween. And now I want to come down and set up that tween, and I want to put an easing of 100 on it. And now I want to rotate this a couple of times as well, which will kind of give it, make the text kind of appear to be dancing in a way. So I'm going to choose clockwise, and I'm just going to give it two rotations. Okay, and then again, I want this to stop after it comes through once. So I'm going to highlight that last keyframe, come to the Actions panel, and just put in a stop. Okay. So now, when, when we test this movie, this thing will be scaling up slowly and rotating, plus we'll be seeing that animation that we exported from After Effects. So let's go ahead and test the movie and see what we have. You can see there it is, and now it's kind of got a really cool effect as if it's dancing, and it's all really smooth and very lightweight. As you can see, if we come up to the bandwidth profiler, it's only 5K, which is very acceptable for this type of thing. So let me just run it again so you can see it. Oh, yeah, there we go. So you can see it's really smooth, and an animation like this, yes, you could technically have done that inside of Flash. You could have tweened all those letters, and uh, or I mean, I'm sure it's possible. Uh, I'm sure somebody could do it with ActionScript. But the point is, is to use After Effects and its powerful text animation features uh, for your Flash work. Because I mean, why go through all this tweening on the timeline when you don't have to? So this is just the first of a series in uh, integrating After Effects and Flash because I think this is a really underdeveloped area that uh, people haven't explored too much. So uh, thanks for watching.